Yeah, so thank you uh, very much for Madam Sullivan for setting the context of, of the types of chips that are going to be created over the next 10 15 years. There's some very high verification challenges. And, and, and we'll be looking at how we try to solve those verification challenges through the day. One of the first ones, uh, which everybody's seeing at the moment, is getting enough engineers to do, uh, to do the verification we need. And that uh, brings us nicely to our, our second speaker today. Uh, first one's Olivier uh, of AEG devices. Uh, he's the CEO, CEO and founder there. Uh, he has over 20 years experience uh, in verification, um, and he founded this company to provide design verification services uh, as well as turnkey solutions. He's a trainer himself, has also developed training in verification languages, but also an IP and SOC level verification methodologies uh, as part of the ST microelectronic verification school. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Um, so, how to build the uh, future verification engineers. So I'm going to talk about that uh, today. Uh, actually, um, I came in uh, so that I got the smell of the coffee and uh, uh, the end of the presentation. <laughs> uh, as you have seen uh, by my name, I'm French. Um, um, sorry, excuse me, your mic is turned off. Too technical. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, so yeah, as I was uh, going to say, so one of the big ch biggest challenges uh, for the, the, the coming years is really to get the, the verification engineers uh, and get enough verification engineers. I think the recent years we all have seen that that we were lacking verification engineers and that was difficult to recruit and the, there is always a fight between uh, all of us getting the engineers and so on and okay uh, but we need to get more engineers the thing is uh, we all we all have seen this uh, picture from the uh, Wilson research uh, study uh, we need more verification engineers there is as many verification engineers as designers and so on we all know that okay uh, meanwhile, if you look at it, there is less students going to uh, the electronic domains that, compared to the computer science, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, and all this uh, cool stuff. Uh, and we need more people, and there is less people. Uh, so we are kind of in uh, trouble here. Um, if we look at additional studies, uh, there is a Deloitte report that is typically saying that we need about 1 million additional microelectronic people in the, in the coming years. Um, that is a lot. Um, now, this is in microelectronics, not only in verification, so the study doesn't go that far. But if we just assume that uh, we take part of it in verification, let's assume that it's 15%, just like this, uh, that is still 150,000 verification engineers that we need to build in the coming years. Uh, how are we going to build them? Uh, so this is a challenge for everyone and we are all involved in that challenge. Um, just a little comparison. I just mentioned 150,000 people uh, to build. Um, if I enter verification engineer in Europe on LinkedIn, I got one 176,000 jobs that are open, and I have 154 uh, people who have verification engineer in their profile. Um, that is quite general. It might be software, it might be biological or whatever, okay, but there is a mismatch. Um, if I only take UVM to be a bit more precise, I found 
25,000 people, uh, 25,000 jobs in Europe, and about 47 people who have put UVM on their profile. Oh, yeah. uh, so just to compare things, um, this is on my profile, this is on my network, uh, that goes up to the third level, so it might not be everyone there, uh, but I believe on the third level there are pretty much 90% uh, uh, of the people in Europe. Um, so this is a really big change. We need more people. So first thing with that, we need to attract people to do the aviation. We need to attract students to the aviation. We need the young people going to school to know about microelectronics, to know about the aviation, to first know about microelectronics. And uh, when, I, when I was young, I, was, I wanted to do um, patisserie. Uh, okay, I didn't know about microelectronics. Okay, um, but we need we need to let this known. Okay, we need to attract people. Um, also, aviation. We all agree that it's not about UVM. It's not about formal. It's also about the verification mindset. Can we teach verification mindset? Can you find a training on the verification mindset? Uh, this is a big, a big issue. Can we build verification engineers with a verification mindset? We also need to accelerate the ramp-up phase. Uh, some companies are telling me we need two years to get uh, to build a good verification engineer. Some others say six months. That depends. That depends where we start from. That depends on the people. That depends how much we invest on trainings. But we need to accelerate that to uh, to accelerate and get a better return on investment. We need to get that, but with the big M of methodology, uh, not the M of UVM. Uh, okay. uh, just uh, the, the methodology is a key thing. Um, also, we all heard the recent months about AI. AI is going to change the way we are going to do navigation. I don't know yet how. Uh, but you see on the booth uh, around here from the EDA vendors, there is AI everywhere. So this is going to change the way we work. Uh, so this is going to be also a challenge in the coming years. We need to attract people. The first thing is we need to change the perception of the aviation. Uh, oh, you're a aviation engineer. Uh, what is what is the aviation? The aviation is just testing. Uh, this is just try things. So this is boring. I'm not doing anything. We need to change that. We need to change that perception to attract people. Uh, variation is fun. We need to let this known. We all need to work on the employer brand and make, make it clear that variation is cool. Uh, we need marketing, marketing. We all need to do that. Uh, we need, all need to work on the communication to make known that variation is cool. Um, for this, we need testimonials. Verification is fun. Verification is valuable. The verification makes sense, and we need to let this known. And if we, if you look at the young people, if you want to attract them, you need to make sense. Will it be enough? We are competing against AI. We are competing against cyber security. We are competing against Internet of Things. Uh, about software, lots of software aspects, and this is cool for the students, and this is attractive. So we need, we are competing against that. Um, can we accelerate the ramp-up phase? Uh, we need to involve the universities. We all need to talk to universities and let the universities know that we need verification engineers. There are good universities, they are building designers, they are building front-end designers, back-end designers, there are sometimes lectures on verification. I do give lectures on verification in some universities. I've got 20 hours to explain everything I know about verification. This is clearly not enough. Um, the companies uh, are working with the people and give trainings or they buy trainings and so on. Generally speaking, these trainings are on system very log, they are on formal, they are on UVM, on this is cool, this is techniques. They, is it enough? Um, the thing is, um, once we get out of the trainings, I've got a blank page, I've got a project to work on, and uh, okay, I've learned lots of things, where do I start? And this is a big issue. Um, there are good trainings on languages, 
there is, uh, in terms of metallurgy, it, this is a bit more difficult to find trainings on metallurgies. Um, uh, do we have trainings how to build a verification plan and how to uh, do the right thing and so on. Okay. Um, so as Mike mentioned uh, during the introduction, uh, I do work also with HT Microelectronics on this type of things. We give trainings, but not only trainings, it's actually a full program, it's a one-year program to leverage the students who start with technical aspects and they learn the languages, they learn the techniques, they learn UVMs. We work with EDA vendors that they provide trainings on tools and so on. So in the end, they have lots of techniques, but they are also training on the jobs and we've got tutors and we help them um, leveraging, leveraging their skills on the training on the job. And this is quite important uh, to get more than just the training. Is it enough? Maybe not. Maybe uh, we need to do more. Uh, still, it's just better than uh, just doing a training. Can we teach the verification mindset? I actually asked ChatGPT uh, about the verification mindset, and I was really surprised because uh, ChatGPT knew about the verification mindset. ChatGPT is telling me that the verification mindset means to have a systematic and rigorous approach to verifying your design through a series of tests and simulation and so on and so on. Is it about the verification mindset? Um, I feel that it is just boring. Okay. Verification mindset is about hardware versus software. We need skills on both. It's about being perfectionist, still pragmatic. It's about rigorous, still a bit player. It's about being reactant. Hey, I found a bug in your design. And being a social person. Oh, by the way, um, I try what is written in the spec and um, that doesn't work exactly how I expect. Can you help me debug? I think there is something wrong. Oh, that's a bug in your design. Sorry, guy. Okay. We need to be social, okay? We need to be curious. Uh, try to find everything in the specification, ask things and so on. We need to be distrustful. Don't trust the designer who says, oh, I've changed the design, but don't worry, it doesn't change anything. Okay. Um, we need to be, uh, we need to think by the absurd, uh, be contradictory. Uh, we need to be serious, uh, still with a bit of sense of humor, uh, just uh, to avoid being too boring. Uh, so the verification mindset is just about all of this, and this is not just about the systematic approach of doing verification and verifying things, building things, and so on, as ChatGPT said. What about AI? Uh, AI is definitely to change things. Um, am I going to be replaced by AI, or AI is going to help me? I don't know yet, okay? If AI is going to help me verifying, why can't I just use AI to build a design that is right the first time, which doesn't need variation? Okay, just a question. And uh, if I do so, uh, how can I trust that? Okay, uh, so surely AI is going to change things. Uh, so the job is going to change and we will need to adapt. Some directions uh, to get to these, uh, well, to solve these challenges. Marketing communications, we need to make known that verification is cool. Uh, we need to involve universities. We are all in charge of talking to universities and involving the universities. There are good projects with some universities in Europe uh, with, which are funded by the European, European uh, Consortium and so on. Uh, we need to uh, get involved in that and build the right trainings on the, or the right uh, masters uh, for the future. Um, technical trainings are good. We need to do more. We need to tutor the people. We need to coach the people to leverage their skills. And also, uh, we need to recognize the expertise. As soon as a verification engineer is good with five, ten years of experience, if he or she moves to management, uh, well, it might be one person, it will be one person less in verification, one people more in management. 
uh, there are good managers. I, sometimes uh, people who are moving from technical to management are wrong, like bad managers. We need to, to take care of this sometimes, but we definitely need to recognize the expertise and, uh, and get good people good doing the good thing. I'm done. Just like a good train, I always finish on time. Well Sorry? Just like a good train, I always finish on time. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, so thank you. Uh, hello? Yeah, so thank you uh, to Francois for his presentation. Uh, we're going to move... Uh, I just wanted to point out, Stu, actually. So, uh, Stu, do you want to stay up? Stay up? Because I know Stu does a lot of work with students in the UK. He's on the TechWorks desk. Uh, I think the government's um, national um, uh, semiconductor strategy offers a glimmer of hope. Um, I think that's, uh, that offers a vehicle that hopefully there'll be some funding right at the start of the skills pipeline. I think you covered education and training. Universities deliver education. Training is sort of separate. Um, so my proposition, maybe we should look at a postgraduate um, uh, apprenticeship use the apprenticeship levy, create an apprenticeship standard that could be delivered, uh, wrap the training in that. That's maybe a thought for Mike and, Mike and Neil to discuss later. Uh, but um, great to chat to people at break about skills. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. yeah, thank you. It, it's and uh, one, sorry, just, uh, one thing I'd like to point out is our, our sponsors, Doulos, are here. And, and we, in, the, in the verification forum run by TechWorks, we did discuss the lack of engineer students and engineers coming into the profession. So we have been trying to address that. Um, and now we have, the forum has universities on there. I know a lot of universities are trying to increase the number of students coming in. And as part of the TechWorks forum as well, we've now added in a verification training program, which starts, it runs for five weeks. Uh, and the next one starts next Tuesday. So I can give you details of that as well. But um, we are, uh, and then we also try to get more students to this conference, and I think we have quite a few students here. This may be embarrassing, but if you want to put your hands up so people can identify you, and uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So just so, to let you know, yeah. ver verification is cool, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you want to keep your hands up, because that so that so uh, our, our, the, 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 the companies might want to come and find you during the break and. <laughs> Get, get your CV. So uh, you could be, you find yourselves very popular, so it's good to identify yourselves. But anyway, thank you to Francois. We're thank going you. to move to our second speaker, yeah, uh, yeah. our final speaker this morning. Thank you.